in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, I ask that you'll encourage their hearts, Lord God, because your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Lord. I ask that you'll encourage them, Lord God, to dig deep into your word, Lord God. Through the sermon that they're going to hear, Lord God, that they'll dig deep, Lord. Through Bible study, Lord God, they'll dig deep, Father God. Through church school, Lord God, they'll dig deep, Lord God. Through daily meditation, Lord God, and daily devotionals, they'll dig deep into your word, Lord. And as they go into your word, Lord God, they will find you in the midst of their situation, Lord. And they'll know, Lord God, that you have a plan for them, Lord God, a plan for good, not for evil, to give them a perfect end, Father. Now, Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Lord God. We speak life over him, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for he and Sister Jennifer, Lord God, for the 16 years you've given us, Lord God, together with them, Lord. We speak life and blessings, Lord God, healing and protection, Lord God, over them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you'll encourage their hearts, Lord God, that they grow not weary in well-doing, Lord God, for they shall reap, Lord God, because they will not faint, Father God. Now, Lord God, we ask that you'll bless their family, Lord God. We thank you for their family, Lord God, and for them giving them to us, Lord God. Now, Father, we ask, Lord God, that you'll pour out a special anointing on our pastor, Lord, so that we will receive a word that comes from you, Lord God. For we know that one word, Lord God, from you will change our whole lives, Lord. We lay our hearts open, Lord God, as good soil, Lord, that your seed will fall deep, Lord God, and prosper in our hearts, Lord, that the word we hear today, Lord God, we will become, because we're not only hearers of the word only, we're doers of the word, Father. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. And Lord God, we commit to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. From the very beginning, Lord, you created me to worship you. From the very beginning, oh Lord, Lord, you created me to worship you. Do you believe that this morning? That you're just not here by happenstance. But he created you special. Something about your worship is different from mine, but we all worship him. Help me sing the song. From the, From the very beginning, Lord, Lord you, you created me to worship. How do you worship us? By saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. I adore you. I adore you. Lord, you created me to worship you. Lord, you created me to worship you. I'll try to do 
from the very beginning. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Lord, you created me to worship you. Lord, from the very beginning, Lord, you created me to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Do you love him this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. And I praise you. your holy name. Hallelujah. Wave your holy hands and Lord, worship. I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I adore you. I adore you. Oh, Lord. Lord you created me to worship you. Lord, you created, you created me to worship you. Come on, musicians. Now, I don't care where you are, but whatever you've got to worship him with, I want you to use your hands. I want you to use your hands, your mouth, your heart, whatever you got. Come on, soprano. Yes, he did. Hey, hey. Lord, you created. Yes, you did. Lord. Lord, you created. Come on, just wave your hand, somebody. Lord, you created. My heart. Lord, you created. Listen, listen. I'm just going to share with you. I'm sitting here on this organ right now. 
My right ear has been clogged for over five months. Been going to the ear doctor, praying. I have no idea what's coming out of my mouth. So I don't know about you. You may not be feeling well. You may not have the energy that you once had. But I dare you to praise him with what you got. With that left ear, I'm going to praise him. If you have that body wrecked with pain, I dare you to give him the praise. Come on. Create it. Create it. To worship you. To worship you, 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 Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I give you my heart, to worship you, Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, praise team. Reminding us that the Lord has created us to worship Him. That is a part of our main existence is to worship him and I thank God because he has been so bountifully good to my life and I thank him for the team that he has hooked up with Mrs. Wright and myself who has been a rock for me in a weary land so I thank God for her and uh, she's always encouraging me and praying for me and doing all of those wonderful things that uh, spouses should do for each other. Amen. In this environment that we're living in, There's a lot of discouragement. There are discouragements with the pandemic of the coronavirus that has affected us in so many ways. There is the discouragement of the injustices that we see in this country, especially with black and brown people. There is the discouragement of the operation that we see that is coming from our governmental officials. And there's a sweeping discouragement that we see that is going around throughout the world. And so today I want to address this fever, this disease called discouragement. From 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to read verses 3, 4, and 6. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire 
and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. Verse 6. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found encouragement in the Lord. That word encouragement is also translated strength. David found encouragement in the Lord. So today I want to talk about winning the battle of discouragement. Winning the battle. It is winnable. One of the most dreaded diseases in the world is one that we wouldn't list as a dreaded disease. As a matter of fact, we probably wouldn't even mention it at all. Yet it is as prevalent as the common cold. As a matter of fact, it is more prevalent than the common cold. One of the most deadliest diseases in the world is discouragement. As a matter of fact, it is the most common of all diseases that exist. Why is that, Pat? Because all of us get discouraged. There is no one who doesn't become discouraged regardless of age. Discouragement is universal. Discouragement is a potent disease because of its recurring nature. You see, we can become discouraged a number of times throughout the day, a week, a month. It's not just a one-time thing and we become immune from it. Furthermore, discouragement is highly contagious. Other people can become discouraged because you are discouraged. Our discouragement can have a reciprocal effect upon us and upon others. There are several reasons why we become discouraged. One reason is becoming fatigued. We simply work ourselves to exhaustion. We just become plain worn out physically, mentally, and emotionally drained. And fatigue is a major cause of discouragement. It, it, it usually happens right about the midpoint mark when we are only halfway to getting something done and we are so burnt out and we start saying to ourselves, shall I keep going on? I don't know if I can continue, but the project has to be done. Another reason why we become discouraged is because of frustration. We become frustrated when there is so much rubbish in our lives that waste our time, consume our energy, and keep us from becoming all we can become. Also failure. Failure is another reason why we become discouraged. When setbacks and coming up empty on a goal can cause us to lose heart, confidence, and become discouraged. Then there is the fact that things are not turning out the way we thought it would. 
It's the feeling that things should be better than they are right now. <laughs> the people around us should be better than they are. Our children should be better than they are. Circumstances should be better than they are. Relationships should be better than they are. Our finances should be better than they are. And you know what? <laughs> You're probably right. Things should be better than they are, but they are not. And so we end up becoming discouraged because things are not what we thought they should be. Here's the question. Is there an antibody, a vaccine that we can take that will cure us of our discouragement? Well, I haven't heard of such medication being on the market for public use yet. But what I have discovered is a story in the Bible that addresses the discouragement disease. It's located in 1 chap Samuel chapter 30. The biblical story is about David, the giant killer, becoming a fugitive, living the life of a wilderness exile for his own survival and the survival of his ragtag men. David partners with the enemy king of Achish of Gath to protect him from King Saul of Israel. King Saul was hunting David down like a wanted fugitive. So David hooked up with the king of Gath to conduct raids on Israel's villages and towns. However, David will conduct the raids, but not on the Jewish town as he was pretending, but on the Philistine town. The Amalekites, they got notice of what David was doing and took out their revenge on him and his men. So one day, while David and his men were with King Achish of Aphak, the Amalekites took out their revenge against David by raiding his camp, taking their wives and daughters and sons into captivity. When David and his 600 men arrived back at Ziklag, they discovered that their camp had been burned and their families taken away. These brave warriors who were relentless and fearless fighters, the Bible says that they all wept aloud until they had no more strength left to weep. They began to talk among themselves about stoning David to death because of the capture of their families. The very people who looked up to David as a guide and a friend and a leader are ready now to stone him to death. David, in the midst of all of this, had reached a point where he was so down the ladder of despair that he'd reached the bottom rung. David was greatly distressed, greatly discouraged, in despair, the lowest of his life. But then the Bible says, although David was in the bottomless pit of life. He encouraged himself in the Lord. David offers us what we can do when we become discouraged. As bad as things may be in our lives that's fueling our discouragement. David reminds us that there is still hope to find encouragement. However, if we're going to overcome our disappointment, then there are three things that are required of us to find encouragement in the Lord. One thing that we must do to encourage ourselves is to regroup. 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 David had just won a string of spectacular military victories. But when he returned from the battle and found his camp destroyed by the Amalekites and his family taken away, captive, he was heart sick. It was at this point that David had to regroup to determine his next move. In order to regroup about his next move, it predicated upon the fact how he talked to himself. David needed to talk to himself in the right way 
in order to do the right thing, to find encouragement in the Lord. One of the greatest lessons that we can ever learn is how do we talk to ourselves in the midst of a crisis? What we say to other people is important, but what we say to ourselves is far more important. It's good to learn how to speak in public, but it's better to learn how to talk to ourselves. You recall the woman with the issue of blood who touched Jesus' garment and she was made whole? Her healing was predicated on the fact of how she talked to herself. Because the Bible says that she said to herself, if I may touch the hem of his clothes, I shall be made whole. Don't miss the fact that her blessing came by the fact that it says that for she said to herself. As a matter of fact, she could have talked herself out of her blessing. After she had suffered repeated disappointment, it would have been easy for her to tell herself there is no hope. She could have become bitter instead of better. Her better was realized due to the fact of how she talked to herself. My brothers and sisters, when life is going badly for us, how do we talk to ourselves? Do we develop self-pity and reach the point of enjoying our circumstances? In our regrouping, we have to learn how to talk to ourselves in the right way. Don't let the what ifs torment us when we are refocusing. What if I get hurt or become ill? Uh, what if the company downsizes and I lose my job? What if people don't like or accept me? What if I can't find someone to love me? What if, if I end up alone? The Bible calls this imagination. We are imagining the worst case scenario. Paul says cast it down for if we don't we'll live in dread concerning these things that haven't happened yet and may not ever happen to us if we don't think God can turn our situation around he probably won't turn it around we have to learn how to talk and to look for the best in every situation don't you know there's some good in every situation no matter what we are going through oh myself my brothers and sisters we got to regroup and keep the right attitude and we can find something good about our situation this is what we must do that when we are in our predicament of, of feeling discouraged we must fill our minds with some God thoughts God thoughts will fill our minds with faith, hope, and victory. God thoughts will build us up and encourage us. They will give us the strength to keep on keeping on. So if we're going to win the battle of discouragement, then we must regroup by keeping our minds on God thoughts. And when you put your mind on God's thoughts, then you can speak to yourself what God is speaking. And what God is speaking to you will help you to lift up your countenance and be able to rise and raise your Yourself up beyond the despair and discouragement because God's word will not allow you to stay down. God's word will not allow you to have a self pity party. God's word will not allow you to feel discouraged because there's so much life in God's word. There's so much hope in God's word. There's so much victory in God's word. So the next time you feel like you cannot rise above your discouragement, open the Bible and look and listen to the word of God because there's encouragement in the word of God. That's what David did. David said, I got to recruit myself. I'm so down. I don't want to stay down anymore. I'm discouraged, but I don't want to discourage anymore. So I got to talk to my mind. I got to say some good positive thing to my mind. I cannot allow myself to live like this in discouragement because discouragement is a thief and a robber. It robs me of the the joy of living today. It robs me of the peace that I should have within myself. It robs me of the victory that I should be walking in because Jesus Christ did not give us defeat, but Jesus Christ gave us victory because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So my brothers and sisters, you got to learn how to regroup and talk to yourself in the right way. And put some God thoughts in your mind. Another thing we must do to win the battle of discouragement. Not only do we have to regroup, 
We have to refocus. We have to refocus. We have to refocus. When David and his men arrived back to their camp <laughs> and discovered that the Amalekites destroyed it, captured the wives and the children, they dropped to the ground and wept loudly and openly. And the Bible says, until they couldn't weep anymore. I don't know if you've been there, that you cried so long that you didn't even have any more tears to shed. Notice now that David did not stay down. When David was brought down to his knees, he looked up in the quiet of the Lord. In other words, David was preparing himself to react according to what instruction the Lord would give him. David reached upward because he knew his help was there. He could not look horizontal because they were talking about stoning him to death. So the only place he could look was to look upward. It, 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 it's, 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 it's like he refocused on that line in his words in the 121st Psalm. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills where my help comes. In other words, if David was going to encourage himself, then he had to refocus his faith on the promises of God. Whatever words God was to give him, he was going to believe it and live it. The person now without God has to feel the role of God in his or own life. Let me say that one more time. The person without God has to feel the role of God in his or her own life. Now, that may be okay in good times, but what about malignant sales, faulty heartbeats, layoff at work, home foreclosure, and phone calls that bring bad news in the wee hours of the morning? To whom do you turn then, my Lord, when our lives change so abruptly? Where can we turn in such moments? Dark days calls for us to refocus ourselves and call upon the name of the Lord. Because the Bible said the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Disappointment aren't a reason to run away. They are reason to turn a different way. Did I hear you out there? I need to repeat that one more time. <laughs> that disappointment aren't a reason to run away. They are a reason to turn a different way. Stop the madness of our own assumptions and assessments. Turn a different way. Regroup yourself. Refocus yourself. Trust God beyond what our eyes can see. Allow his word to steady us and hold us together when circumstances are falling apart. Hold on to the fact what God says. This is what the Lord says to us. He said, now listen, your discouragement or your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. Uh -uh. It's what he's trying to tell us that if you want to be encouraged, look in the mirror today and declare to yourself that this too shall pass. Do I have a witness out there? Come on now. Don't leave me up here standing by myself. I know there's a few witnesses out there who can declare I've been there. I've experienced it. I've seen the hand of God working in my life. And I've come by to tell you, those of you who may not be where I am right now, you may be in the field in the front of discouragement, but I've come by to tell you as a witness that this too shall pass. I was there before. You can tell them. Go on and testify. Say, I know what passes 
talking about. I was there. I mean, I was so down, I didn't know I could get any further down. I was in a place that I'd never been before. I was in a place that I never thought I'd ever end up. I was so discouraged, so despondent, so despair that I didn't even know how to get up. But I come out and tell you, the word is true, that weeping may endure for a night. I mean, I cried some tears. I shed some tears. I even got to the point that all I could do was open my mouth and words could not even come out. But I'm telling you, there is a resurrection day that God can raise you up even when you can't raise yourself up. Do I have a witness out there? And can you testify that this too shall pass? How many of you have gone through something and then you got out of that position and then you went through another something that was darker than the first one you went to? But God lifted you up and brought you right out of it. And how many times have you gone in and out of stuff? But God brought you out of it every step of your journey. And so you can testify that I may be down now, but the Lord I serve, he's well able to lift me up out of my discouragement. I'm telling you, this too shall pass. I don't care what it is. I don't care how dark it is. I don't care how painful it is. This too shall pass. What are you talking about, Reverend? They said unto me that I only have six months to live, but I come by to tell you, this too shall pass. Because if you don't live, God has a better place with your name on it. It's called glory. This too shall pass. It will pass. It will pass. So refocus. 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 And so my brothers and sisters, not only should we, hallelujah, regroup, learning how to talk to ourselves, not only should we refocus our sights, but one last thing we must do to win this battle of discouragement. Is resolve to press on. Resolve to press on. Here it is in, the, in our lesson today. The Bible says that David inquired of the Lord. Saying, shall I pursue this troop, that is the troop that had captivated his family. Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Press on. Ah, you shall overtake it. And without fail, you shall recover all. Oh, David, humiliated, self condemned, looking on to the future, not knowing what's best to do, took heart. Casting his burden on the Lord. Seeking God's direction as to the future. He cried out to God, what shall I do? God's response was, press on. If we're going to win the battle of discouragement, then we must allow our discouragement to draw us nearer to God and not away from God. And our discouragement should draw us near to God by developing a trust in God and earnestly looking for his guidance to face the future. It is not our discouragement to draw us near to God so that God can hold us in his arm and rock us to sleep. No, no. Draw us near to God so that it can develop a trust in God 
and earnestly looking for his guidance to face the future. God is willing to hear our cry, but he's also willing to give us a permanent spiritual advantage for our present anguish. Did you hear what I said? He is willing to give us some spiritual advantage for our present predicament. Therefore, we can hope in God when all else fails. In other words, let, let God, you got to let God be God in your life. You, you got to let God be God in your life. Therefore, you got to step back and let God take control. And, and, and we must resolve within ourselves that when we let God be God in our lives, all right, and, 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 and we, that is that we're turning our lives into the hand of God who's going to determine our future. And so if we're going to put and trust in God, we don't worry about where we are going to fall or fall short or whatever the case may be. We don't think about our discouragement. No, no, because we are putting ourselves and our trust in the hand of God. And therefore, when we do that, we must resolve within ourselves to press on in spite of our discouragement. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Now, I said you got to press on in spite of our discouragement. That doesn't mean that when you, when, you, when you allow your discouragement to draw you closer to God, that your discouragement is going to evaporate right away. No, you, you still may have the predicament going on and stewing in your life, but you got to learn how to press on in spite of your circumstances. You see, our bodies and minds and spirits were not created to live stretches of time in discouragement. Because discouragement is a fatal thing to the body and mind and spirit that God has placed in us. And if we soak ourselves in, in the midst of discouragement, I guarantee you, you're going to have some physical condition that's going to affect you. And it's going to also affect you emotionally because you're going to feel so depressed that you're going to major and see your life and walk that way. And when you are a depressed person you got to watch out because you can become an angry person and so that's why God never made us to have depression and discouragement to become the one that envelops us and calls us to live a discouraged life so we have to dig deep I mean we got to dig deep within ourselves to rise from the pit of discouragement and to move forward trusting God to lead us to a better place mentally spiritually and physically that's what you got to do because even if the situation has not disappeared in your life what you got to do is you got to seek God out get me to a better place in the midst of my situation get my mind to a better place get my spirit to a better place and get me physically into a better place and that if I can get my mind in a better place then I can be like the woman with the issue of blood all I got to do is just touch the hem of his garment and I shall be made whole now the enemy of our mind he would not like it the enemy of our mind will try to convince us that we don't have what it takes but God says we do have what it takes and so the question is who are you going to listen to are you going to listen to the circumstances which is the foundation in the field of the enemy and so when you look at your situation that's the enemy speaking back to you so who are you going to listen to are you going to listen to God are you going to listen to the enemy who's speaking back to you and telling you the things that you cannot do but God says you do have what it takes the enemy will say to us that you're not able to succeed but God says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The enemy will say to us, you will never get out of debt. But God says, not only are you going to get out of debt, you will lend and not borrow. The enemy will say to us, you will never amount to anything. But God says, he will raise you up and make your life significant. The enemy will say to us, your problems are too big. There is no hope. But God says, he will solve 
solve those problems. Moreover, he will turn those problems around and use them for your good. The enemy will say to us, it is impossible. But God says to us, with me all things are possible. The enemy will say to us, we are too exhausted to press on. But God says, wait on me and I shall renew your strength. The enemy will say to us, nobody loves me. But God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. The enemy will say to us, you cannot go on. But God God said, my grace is sufficient for you. The enemy will say to us, you don't know what to do. But God said, I direct you and order your step. The enemy will say to us, you cannot forgive yourself. But God said, you can because I already have. The enemy will say to us, you cannot make ends meet. But God says to us, I will supply all of your needs. The enemy will say to us, you are too afraid to press on. But God says to us, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power and a sound mind. The enemy will say to us, you are not smart enough. But God says, I give you my wisdom. The enemy will say to us, you'll always be alone. But God says to us, I will never leave you, nor shall I forsake you. The enemy will say to us, it's not worth it. But God says, to us it will be just press on and keep your hand and my hand so tell the enemy I've been down too long I've wept too many tears I've given depression too many days of my life I've given in too quickly I've locked my hurts deep down within me I've wasted a lot of time feeling sorry for myself I've been fighting with myself and coming up empty but today tell the enemy no more no more weeping no more self pity no more getting down on myself right now I'm going to ride I'm pressing on the upward way new heights I'm gaining every day still praying as I homeward bow Lord plant my feet on higher ground I'm ready are you ready I'm ready to press on to see what the end's gonna be. I'm ready to lift on to a better life and a better place. I'm ready to press on to a higher standard and a higher place. I need somebody who's ready to rise, to rise out of your stupor of discouragement. God is waiting for you. Pack up your bag and walk out of it. Walk out of it. It's time to move with confidence to higher dimension for yourself. The battle is not mine, but it is the Lord. It's time to pack your bags. <laughs> move out of discouragement with confidence. <laughs> and the Bible said the Lord will make a way what? Somehow. Is there a witness out there? Is there a witness out there? So we can win the battle of discouragement. But we must regroup. We've got to learn how to talk to ourselves. Are you talking defeat or are you talking victory? We've got to refocus. We've got to refocus on the word of God. Get some God thoughts in our mind. And are you ready? Do you have the resolve to press on? Because weeping may endure for a night. Get ready for your joy. Because it's coming. It's coming in the morning. My brothers and sisters, I know we are going through some uncharted waters. We may not know how to navigate our emotions and our human spirit through this maze that we're in. But you don't have to try to figure it out. I sincerely believe 
that we have given the White House and Congress too much power in our minds. That we have come to the point that they are more like God than God himself. Could it be that God is watching us, trying to help us to see? Who is your God? Is the pandemic, coronavirus, your God? Do you spend more time focusing upon it? Is Trump your God? Do you spend more time focusing upon him? Who is your God? The Lord says, I am the Lord your God. Besides me, you should not have another. I am a jealous God. And my brothers and sisters are watching. If you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, here's a good time to do so. Just confess, Lord, I have lived my life without you in my heart, in my mind, and my thoughts. But today, God, I want you. I want you to take the steering wheel of my heart, my mind, and pull me through life. Holding it on to my hand, I confess that Jesus died for my sins. And I'm willing to accept what he did for me at Calvary. Um, I know I must take baby steps. And everything is not going to be rosy. But I'm willing to walk where you lead me. And after a while, God, as you continue to develop me, I'll stop walking and I'll start running. And then now, as you keep taking me down the road, I stop walking, I stop running, and then I stop leaping. I start leaping for the joy of my understanding. If you do that in your heart, I want you to reach out to us. Call us at 513-825-4900. If you need prayer today, we want to pray for you as well. You can call our number and we will be praying for you. But we want you to remain encouraged regardless of what it is. Because when you think that you can't change the situation and the situation can only be changed by you, you will become discouraged. If you think I can't change my child, I can't turn it. No, you can't. But I know who's able. God is always able. And he's willing and ready to turn your situation around. So in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, for this day. And may God continue to bless you that you will find his wonders throughout this week. Because God has something special for you throughout this week. He got something special for you. Tell the Lord, please open my eyes so I can see it and my ears so I can hear it. Because I want it and I need it and I'm looking for it. I got a special blessing that's coming my way and I'm going to get it this week. The devil is a liar. He's not going to keep me looking at things that's going to distract me and keep me from looking at what the Lord has for me. I'm going to open my eyes and see it. I'm looking. I'm like a periscope. I'm just moving around looking for my blessing. It's on the way. It's on the way. In Jesus' name, amen. I have asked the choir to sing. Um, this praise team, excuse me, and um, Jennifer and my, and Marcus and Fred Jr., our gratitude to 
God into this congregation. And, uh, and it's a simple song by Walter Hawkins. It's called, Thank You, Lord, for all that you've done for me. And so I want to thank Quinn Chapel Church for 16 years of service. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you. Come on. Come on, praise team. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy is down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Oh, there are folks without homes living out on the streets, and the drug habits, some say, they just can't be. There's muggers and robbers, no one seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you. Thank you. 